all the books. Hey, hey, it's time for book reviews. Hello everyone and welcome to Fogmaster's vlog for the Warhammer 40,000 gaming system created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to book review number 12 of this vlog. Today I'm revisiting my old review of uh, my old personal favorite called Soul Hunter. This is a novel I picked up back in 2010 when I was going abroad to Greece with my family. And this book together with Galaxy in Flames and Dark Apostle were my reading material for that week. I had no expectations on the book at first. It was about Night Lords and back then I thought they were amongst the most silly Chaos Space Marines there were uh, with their bat wings and all that and I didn't know much about their stories. I had finished reading up to Fallen Angels or A Thousand Sons in the Horus Heresy series by that point so I needed new material while waiting. Well what can I say about this novel? It is written by Aaron Dunsky Bowden and prior to this I had only read his other novel called Cadian Blood which is the first 40k novel I ever read and I totally loved that one too. I had also from Dark Apostle started to love more of the Chaos Space Marine point of view getting tired of the imperial propaganda of FOR THE EMPEROR and all that. Well for me having such low expectations this book certainly blow me away. So I was asked by Chris V to revisit Lord of the Night review and then decided to revisit all of my Night Lords reviews from the early days. We can begin with the front cover for the omnibus that collected them all together. On it we see Night Lords in a weird red filter during a battle. I think it doesn't at all match the front covers that we saw for the individual novels and it doesn't do the story justice at all. I will give this one a 3 out of 10 forks. On the front cover for the novel, we see a Night Lord Atramentor Terminator at the front with our main character Talos behind him with his iconic Blood Angel sword and a pistol. This is a perfect front cover for me personally, and I will give this one a 10 out of 10 forks. Let's see what this story is all about. The Night Lords were once amongst the most potent forces of the Imperium, space marines who used fear itself as their weapon. Now, cast adrift from the Emperor's light and hunted as heretics for after their monstrous betrayal, the Night Lords clad themselves in symbols of death and fight the, the long war, bringing pain and terror to all who worship the corpse god of Terra. A summon from Boromaster Abaddon sends these rebels on a dangerous journey that leads inoxorable to conflict with the Emperor's chosen warriors, the Blood Angels. First of all, I love the characters. This book isn't a typical Force A attacks slash gets attacked by Force B. It is characters who are driven by something. First we're introduced to the main character, which is Talos. He is a Night Lord's Astartes who has lived since the end of the Great Crusade and fought during the Horus Heresy. He's a member of First Claw and for individual characters I would recommend that you look at my special video specifically called First Claw where I go into detail about the different characters. This novel is quite special as it got me so interested in the Night Lords that I made a whole army of them and uh, I have tried to replicate the main characters from First Claw a couple of times with some small updates here and there. Either way, so he's a member of the Exalted's War Band. The Exalted is a former sergeant slash captain who has become possessed by a demon and now rules the warband. What we are later introduced to is Talos' new slave who is named Septimus who means the seventh, meaning the seventh slave. He's a part of the crew for some time and knows his way around the ship. Then we have the character of Eurydice who later becomes Octavia meaning the eighth. She is a navigator who is captured by the Night Lords and later serves as the eyes of the reader as she gets to explore the inner sanctums of the Night Lords and how they work as a warband but also a former legion with their different traditions and all that. She is completely new to the crew and knows nothing what is going on. So everything she asks is meant to serve as a question the reader might be wondering and be answered for them. What is very unique by these renegade Astartes is that many of them despise chaos as much as the Imperium itself, despite that many of the Lydian and the crew is tainted by it. If you read any of the other things about the Night Lords, they are meant to serve as the few almost non-tainted, I use that with the quotation marks, remnants from the Horus Heresy. Few use chaos in their favor or strikes deals with demons. 
But what uh, we should keep in mind is that even though they don't, even though they don't worship chaos in that way, they still serve chaos in that manner. What someone wrote, however, is that this warband is unique and, and that many others, if not most, are still corrupted. So far I've read the opposite, so it's up to each and everyone's own opinion to decide. This novel continues Kideon Blood's trend of adding a Chaos Space Marine playable character to the center inside the book. Previously we saw Typhus in Akkadian Blood, this time we meet Abaddon, which would be a small door in for the future Black Legion series that Arab Danskibarda would eventually also start to write. This is an expansion to the story called Lord of the Night, written by Simon Spurrier back in 2005. You can look at my first review if you haven't, and that book is recommended to be read prior to this. Well, what do I like about this novel? Well, everything. The characters, their relationship with, between each other, the story, and the themes. You often see themes such as the curse of the fathers, broken unity, and instinct to destroy themselves, and we are our own masters. I would give this novel a 10 out of 10 works and highly recommend that you read it. Thank you very much for, and that's everything I had for to this video. Thank you very much for watching this review. See you around everybody. Bye bye. Commercial break. Are you one of those that are tired of these old reviews because of the bad sound, the video quality and the video editing? Would you want to see these reviews in a new light with better audio only? Well, you're in luck because this year Fork is gonna be remaking most of his old reviews or at least those that he can about novels and you can be along on this journey because I need to know which of the older reviews do you want to be seen remade as audio only reviews. I'm not gonna do them all and I'm definitely not gonna do the short stories or the more unpopular books. But those that are bigger that you think that deserve a better quality in audio at least, write down here below which one you want to see in a better new updated version. Check it out.